Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful week and got some good practice building Plotly graphs and Dash apps. So in this tutorial, uh, as part of my Plotly graphs uh, um, video playlist, uh, what I want to focus on is the icicle. The icicle is another type of graph here on uh, the Plotly website, which is very similar to the tree map or the sunburst. Uh, you use these type of graphs when you want to plot hierarchical data, right? So here, for example, you have the parent, uh, the children, and I guess it would say like the grandchildren, also known as the root, the branches, and the leaves. So these are a few examples. I'm going to add this um, uh, link to the under the video so you can uh, take a look at the icicle and what we're going to go over today. So we're going to build these kind of um, icicle charts where we have uh, data on um, enslaved individuals in Virginia from 1718 to 1862. And we're going to build different branches, a uh, different uh, um, icicle chart with different levels. We're going to add colors to the icicle chart. We're going to change the leaf um, column. Uh, we're going to um, also change the, um, the coloring from discrete values to continuous values. And then we're going to change the direction of the icicle uh, from right to left or from down up, up, down. And we'll also lastly control how many levels we want the user to see. If we have like 10 different levels, we can uh, say we only want them to see two levels or three levels down. Right. All this data is inside my GitHub, like always. I'm going to add this link under the video. So feel free to just download or copy paste all this um, um, 38 lines of code into your own Visual Studios or PyCharm or Spider and just run it like I do here. And you will you will have these these charts on your computer so you can follow along. All right. So let's get started. First thing is uh, the vocabulary. Um, icicle or tree maps or sunburst are very similar. Um, and uh, something that is very important to know is um, how um, you describe or call each level. So at the very left of this icicle, uh, you have the root. At the very right, you have the values that are called the leaf right if you see like a tree you have the root at the very right you have the leaves and in the middle you have the branches here we only have one branch but here we have two branches and here we have two branches as well um, similar when you have a, a sunburst um, i don't have i don't want to open it right now because it, um, it's um i have to find it but the sunburst in the middle you'll have the root on the very outer layer of the sunburst you'll have the leaves and in the middle um, between the root and the leaves, you'll have the, um, the branches. Okay, so let's get started. Let's look at the data that I put for you on, on GitHub and open it. And you'll see that here we're importing these libraries. Very, very important that you install Plotly version 5.0 or higher because the icicle is a new graph that's available with Plotly 5.0 or higher. The data is taken from, from this uh, data source right here, which is also under the video, uh, which actually comes from Virginia um, County and Public Library um, uh, record keeping. All right, and then we're going to print out the, just the, the head of this uh, data so you can see what it looks like, and then we're building the, the icicle. This is what the data actually looks like. You'll have different columns here. I changed a little bit the, the, the column header, the titles, um, but this is what it looks like. You'll have, we'll have gender, we'll have age for some of them, uh, period of time, and then the, the enslaver buyer. All right, so let's look how we build the first, the first icicle. This first icicle has one root, one branch, and one leaf on the very right. And to create this, we use this line of code eight and nine so we're building the plotly express icicle the data frame is going to be the df that we just um, um it's a C csv that we downloaded from the website and then the path the path are um 
our, our, our values, non-numerical values. So it starts from the left all the way to the right. Um, the left, most left part value will be the root. The middle part will be the branch. And the very right will be the leaf. So you see here we have a PX constant all. So this is just creating a new column, like an all column that en encompasses everything. And then the branch in the middle will be the period. If you go to the Excel sheet, you'll see the period right here is something that I created. The periods are 20 years, 1760, 1781, and so on and so on. So this will be the period right here. There's one, two, three, four, five different periods. And then at the very right, we'll have the locality. Locality is another column in our pandas data frame right here. And it presents the different counties within Virginia. So here you can see that in for, between 1841 to 1840, there were uh, multiple counties, Campbell, Goochland, and a few counties right here. If you uh, zoom in, you can see. You can probably even see it better if you choose, let's say, 1960. Uh, 1760, you'll see there's four different counties right here. Okay. And then the values is very important. You need to assign a string or a column to this attribute, values. The slaves is actually a numerical number. So the path here that represents all the, the branches, leaves, and root, root is uh, a non-numerical. And then the values is a, is, is a numerical um, uh, column in your pandas data frame that will um, assign the proportions of each box you see in here. So here between 1841 to 1860, you see that we have in the hover 353 slaves, a total of 353 slaves. And here we have 313 slaves in these 20 years. And the last one at the very bottom, we, we had 24 records of, of slaves, of 24 different slaves. Each slave represents uh, a row in our in our data frame okay um, and then same thing here in the leaf you have 242 out, out of let's say here out of between these 20 years we had um, uh, 24 slaves uh, this represents uh, four different counties and the biggest county which has not the biggest county the county with the biggest amount of slave is Goochland County with 15 slaves and then you see this is a bit smaller with four slaves three and two all right so the proportion so you know how big each each box is depends on this the values of the slaves this is very important. You always need to put that inside your code. And you can see here in 1821, the biggest county with the most amount of slaves is Campbell County. And then you have smaller, smaller counties as well. All right, let's look how we create. If you hashtag this out and hashtag this in and run your code, you'll see that now we're adding, it's exactly the same thing as above, but we're adding locality as a color. So it makes it easier to distinguish. If you go to this, this is what it's going to create. And you can see that we have counties just like we had in the first one, but now we distinguish them by color. So instead of, instead of reading each text, each box, um, uh, the text in each box, now we can just see by color. And sometimes, um, when, especially when you have a lot of values inside a, a certain branch or inside a certain leaf, it's a lot easier to see by um, color. So here I see a lot of red color, which means a lot of Campbell counties had the biggest amount of slaves. Um, and then I see a lot of um, next, most common is the Accomack County in Virginia, which has the second amount of slaves. And then we see some some blue ones, which is um, Goochland County. So I, I like I really like looking at, at, at colors because especially when you have a lot of values, it simplifies um, and, and makes the, the counties or, or the values with the highest amount of slaves stand out. Next, in this um, third graph, which is from row 14 and 15, we're just changing the color to gender. So you'll see here, well, not only that, we also added another, we added another branch. So now period and locality are branches and gender is the leaf. So we have root, two branches and one leaf. Remember, we only have, the leaf is always one on the very right and the root is always one on the very left. But here we have 
two branches, period and locality. So you see here the period and the locality is a branch. And then we have gender on the very right, which is the leaf. And gender we also um, categorize by color. So we can read the gender, unknown, female or male, or we can just see color that most of the leaves here are, are green, um, which means it's unknown. Uh, and some are, are blue, I would say, more blue than red. So a little bit more female slaves were recorded than, than male slaves. And you can see the number 66, 47, 42, 40. So it seems like blue is usually a little bit more than than red just by looking at the color we don't have we don't have to look at the text this this next icicle graph that we're creating uh, is changing the the leaf from gender to let's see what it does to enslaver buyer who the individuals that bought the slaves this one right here line 17 and 18 in the code uh, is changing the the leaf from a gender to um, um, slave buyer, whoever bought the slaves. So we can see that uh, Ed D. Christian bought 12, 12 individual, um, enslaved individuals in Campbell County between 1841 to 1860, um, and so on and so on. The bigger the box, the more slaves they bought, right? Let's go down here, another example. Let's go to Accomack County. John Woollett bought 18 slaves in these 20 years. Um, William Williams bought 15 and so on and so on. George Dunton bought four slaves. Remember, and this is uh, possible because you have to have value. This has to be a numerical uh, value assigned to the attribute values. All right, let's go to the next, next line of code 20 to 21. And in here, we can see that it's exactly the same as the last chart. The only difference is we're adding a continuous color to age, right? So before the color, if you can see on the top here on line 15, the color was gender, which is a discrete, dis, um, dis, um, discrete color distinction. So it's, it's a female, male, or unknown. Here, it's a continuous color distinction, the age. So it's taking the average age between the age of zero to the age, I think, of 50-something or 70 is the largest age, and it's just calculating. Most of them are black because it's unknown, their age. The age is null. But when you have some, like here, you have some, you can see the age. Here, there's one slave, the age was 10. Here, there's one slave, the age was 12. And we have some that has multiple, let's say, I think here. Here, we had six slaves, and the average age was 18.3. Um, <clears throat> what I like about this coloring system is that it allows you to see more or less, without reading the age, you can just see more or less the, the, color, the predominant color. So you see a lot of blues and a lot of purples. A lot of the between the ages of 20 or 10 to 20 or 10 to 25, um, right? Blues and purples, and not a lot of yellow or oranges. So uh, most of the slaves that were recorded recorded were between the ages of you know uh, zero to to 30. So a very young age um, potentially for owning them for a longer period of time. Okay, uh, what we did here in this next graph, I just changed to this next graph, we just changed the color, the continuous color from a normal default color that Plotly has to this color from red to blue, which is right here on line 23 and 24. So hashtag this out, hashtag this in, and we'll see that you're changing the color continuous scale from, uh, from the default to RDBU. I'm going to add under the video uh, a link where you can change, you can see all the different values for the different color scales that you can choose from. Okay, lastly, or not lastly, but we're going to see how to hashtag this in 26, 27, 28, hashtag line 36 out. And the difference here, what we're doing is we're changing the orientation of the icicle. So this is going to be, it's, it's horizontal, it's the same um, orientation, but we're flipping the x-axis. So if you flip the x-axis, you'll have this. This is very similar to the second graph, where we had root, branches, and leaf from all, P, 
periods and counties, but we're flipping the x-axis. So now it's going to look like this. Root on the right, branches in the middle, and the leaf on the very left instead of leaf on the very right. You can do the same thing if you want to flip vertical. So here you can do vertical. This is the last chart or one before last. We're going to do orientation V, which is vertical, and we're going to flip the Y axis. So by doing that, uh, instead of up, instead of all on the top, branches in the middle and leaf on the bottom, we're flipping the Y axis. So it looks like this. Uh, I, usually horizontal is a lot better if you have a long text because you see it's hard to read inside of these. But sometimes if you have numbers or short text, the vertical is a nice way to look at an icicle. And lastly is these lines of code. So hashtag this out, hashtag back in 34, 35, and 36. And you'll see in this case we have one, two, three levels, right? Three levels inside our path. But I want to say allow the user to only see or only plot two levels, which is why I only see the root and the branch. See, I can't see the locality because I'm only allowing two levels. Now here, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but some icicles, you will have multiple levels. You'll have maybe like five or six branches, one root and one leaf. So if you don't want the user to see all levels, you can just say max depth two or max depth three. This will be very helpful if you're using dash, right? Um, on top of Plotly, because you can say, okay, plot, um, 10 levels, but if you want to print out something, let the user choose to see only three levels or four levels and then print out the download the plot as a PNG. Like this, we'll go to downloads, Danny, and then we'll just open it. And now we're printed out only two levels uh, because that is what we want to see and we don't want to see everything. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. I hope you get to look into the data and learn more about it. Um, if you would like to um, uh, support me and the education that I provide on YouTube, you can go to patron.com uh, in this link below under the video. Um, or if you'd like a consultation or to see more of me, I can always help um, after you um, through YouTube or through Patreon, whatever you prefer. Thank you very much for considering uh, to support me. Uh, um, never give up, keep practicing, and always remember we're better together, so help each other out. Until next week, bye-bye.